and you can see that happening within the sample. So in sample 22, we pass a valid input, and you can see the first transaction prints out. Uh, but in sample 23, we pass the invalid uh, document, which you can see here. And you can see that we caught the error that we were expecting to catch. And you can see that it printed out the message instead of results that the input document was valid. And this is very important within XSLT 2.0. And this means that you can control whether valid data makes it in or out of your XSLT processing, uh, which really helps the reliability of applications written with XSLT 2.0. So now that we've looked at input, validation. Let's look at output validation. There's two forms of this. Uh, really, they're very much related. Um, first, in samples 24 and 25, we actually show it with a temporary tree. If you looked at the previous demos, you'd see that XSLT 2.0 has the ability to define variables that are sort of inline and temporary trees that are navigable. And this example shows how to look at those temporary trees and validate them on the fly as you're building them. So very much like the previous input validation, now we're looking at temporary trees. And you can see in this style sheet, I create a variable called test validation one, and I just copy it through to the output. In the valid case, you can see that I create a transaction. It's got 101 as the product ID and a quantity of 40, which should be valid, and the output should come out. If you look at the invalid case, you can see very similar but now I have the wrong product ID, it's less than 100, and I have a quantity that's negative, negative one. And you can see in the output from that, that in the valid case, it transformed as expected. In an invalid case, you can see that we've got no results, and you can see that it caught an error that said the validation is not correct. Very similar to that, instead of temporary trees, you can actually do that on the entire output document. So let me show you that. And here you can see in this sample, I do much like the temporary tree, but now for the entire result document, I do validation of strict and I copy through the first transaction. And you go back to the original files that we validated on input. Now, if you pass that in and you're doing a straight copy through, you can see when we pass the valid XML file, you can see that it copied through and we got no error. But when we pass the invalid input and we try to write that entire document out to the output, you can see that it catches a validation error as expected. The final part of schema awareness that I wanted to show you was the ability to look for types. Um, so as part of the validation, we're actually uh, doing type assessment, which would mean that as the tree comes into the XSLT, the tree is annotated with specific types. And you can use those types, much like you use the names of elements, but now you can use the types of elements within your style sheets. This is very useful when you're using something like an industry standard schema, where you may extend some base types within the industry standard schema. You may have multiple extensions for them, and you really want to do uh, business rules and templates that match on the type of data as opposed to the name of the data. So you can see this in schemaware4.xsl. In schemaware4.xsl, you can see that we do the typical matching on the name of elements. So we match sales, and then we match the transactions. And you can see that we apply the templates for product ID. But you can see we're not actually matching on product ID. In, at this case, in, in this case, we're actually matching on the type of product ID. So you can see that I say there's a product ID type. And I don't really care what the name of it is, but as long as it's a product ID type, I'm going to copy out the value of that. That is enabled by what you see up here, where I import the schema. I say that it's in my namespace that I use for all the samples. And you can see the location is that XSD file. So what that means is as this tree is being transformed to the output, um, any element that is annotated with this product ID type will match this rule. Going back to the output, you can see we get very similar output, the only difference being that now this quantity is written out by matching the type instead of matching the element name.
The final sample I wanted to show you was the use of the collection function, again new in the refresh of this uh, uh, beta. And you'll see that I call a style sheet uh, collection.xsl. In collection.ssl, you can see that I'm doing something interesting. I'm not matching on slash, I'm actually matching on a template, uh, a name template, uh, load collection, which you'll see I invoke from the Java class that runs this uh, XSL executable. And I'm looking for uh, sales and products, sales and products, and just pointing out the first transaction, the first product, um, which comes from a temporary tree called sales and products, which happens to be uh, selected from the collection function. You'll see I'm passing in my collection, uh, which is just a indication uh, to the resolver, which I'll show you in a second, of what that collection is called. The interesting thing here is now I'm able to uh, pull from a fairly arbitrarily large amount of documents and load them in uh, in a fairly simplistic way. Um, so if I look at how this was actually invoked, you can see a couple things. One, I said I called an initial name template, um, and that was important because I wasn't matching on slash. I was just going ahead and assuming that someone was going to call me with the load collection template as the initial template. Um, and I was also loading from a collection. You'll see that when I uh, prepared this XSLT, I actually set a collection resolver um, to my collection resolver. And if I go to the definition of my collection resolver, you can see I've got a class called my collection resolver. It implements the X collection resolver, which is part of the API, and it implements this function called get collection. Um, if the URI that comes in is my collection, I can do whatever I want. I can return as much data as I want to the XSL. And you can see what I do is it was called uh, sales and products was what was expected to come out of my collection. So I actually return two XML data files. Um, I get a stream source to them. I actually use the uh, X factory to create items out of those. So you'll see I create an item uh, for the node or the document node that comes back out of the first document. I create an item for the document node that comes out of the second um, uh, stream source and create a X item view across them and create a sequence, um, a XSL uh, sequence of those items. And I return that as the collection. And then back within my XSL, I get a sequence that is bound to this variable and I can use that variable um, as I have later in the style sheet, uh, which then results in the output that you see here, which is the first sale and the first product. Finally, just to touch on some of the other major features that came in uh, as part of this refresh, character maps, which is a new feature, um, the as attribute, which I explained in a previous demo, embedded style sheets. Uh, we talked about the compilation, pre-compilation, the undeclared prefixes, uh, serialization parameter, uh, next match, which is a really good way of uh, reusing uh, templates. Um, we talked about the collection function and we talked about the schema awareness. So you can see there's a lot of new functionality that uh, comes in as part of this beta refresh. And hopefully uh, I've shown you how to use many of them. Uh, if I haven't shown you specifically, look at the samples that uh, are part of the feature pack. Uh, and uh, use the forum to ask questions. Thanks. Bye.